Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! The row between junior doctors and Health Secretary Jeremy Hunt has gone from bad to worse this week. The disagreement centres around a proposed new contract for doctors in England. The government says the existing arrangements are outdated and claims the move will help deliver the Conservative manifesto promise of a seven-day-a-week NHS. The British Medical Association, which represents the junior doctors, says the changes will result in working practices that are unsafe and unfair for both staff and patients. Any industrial action could involve a walkout from all but emergency work in what is likely to be the biggest doctor strike since, well, probably the 1970s. Well, the Labour Party's called on Mr Hunt to scrap his plans and the Shadow Health Secretary, Heidi Alexander, joins us now. Welcome to the Sunday Politics. Uh, is the Labour Party, are you in favour of the concept of a seven-day-a-week health service? We are, um, but I think you need to understand the barriers that exist at the moment in order to provide that seven-day service. And Jeremy Hunt, the Health Secretary, has implied that if you change the junior doctor's contract, um, then in some way that automatically means you have a seven-day NHS. Of course it doesn't. You don't just need junior doctors there. They're already working weekends and nights. You need consultant cover. You need diagnostic support available. You need pharmacists. 24-7 social care and so if Jeremy Hunt isn't being honest about the resources that he would put in to deliver that 24-7 um, NHS then picking a fight with junior doctors which is what he seems to be pretty determined to do at the moment won't provide the solution that he says that it will. But would you, if you wanted a proper seven day a week NHS and you have to do some of the things you've just mentioned there would you also have to change the junior doctors contracts? Uh, well, I'm not totally convinced um, that changing the junior doctors' contracts will actually result in more junior doctors being available on the wards. There are some things that should probably uh, But you said I'm not saying the, the existing contract is perfect. I have said that. I have said that. Would but you I have think to change the, it in some ways to provide seven-day cover, uh, along well, with the other things you mentioned as well. Yeah, well I think that if you listen to what uh, hospital bosses and chief executives say, they are saying very clearly that the junior doctor contract isn't the main issue here. There are other things that would need to change. I think one of the things that really concerns junior doctors is that the proposals that seem to be on the table at the moment are bad for patient safety and they are not convinced that the proposals will result in them not working even more excessive and exhausting hours than they are at the moment. The contract at the moment has financial penalties built into it which means that if a hospital forces junior doctors to work very long hours, then that hospital is financially penalised and th that system, whilst it may not be perfect, has the broad confidence of junior doctors and they are very worried that this proposal that has come forward really in the last couple of days, even though the negotiations have been going on for years, is actually going to comprom compromise patient safety. Was the BMA right to begin a strike ballot without sitting down with Jeremy Hunt over the new offer? Uh, well, I think the BMA and junior doctors feel that they have been backed into a corner because of the way that Jeremy Hunt has handled these negotiations. He started off by saying that the BMA and junior doctors would have to agree to 22 out of 23 preconditions laid down by the Doctors and Dentist Remuneration Board. He then went on to imply that, um, which has angered junior doctors even more, that if you just change this contract it will somehow uh, result in lives being saved. And then we have a situation on Wednesday, which is 24 hours before um, the ballot of junior doctors is due to start, that he decides that the best way to conduct negotiations is to issue a press release from the right. Department of Health. And I'm not sure that that's the way that no, that's know, the best way to conduct you know, negotiations, Andrew. This can be quite complicated. He has been talking to the BMA since 2012. This is not a new problem. Uh, he has made an 11% pay offer. He said that uh, other than the few who are already working illegal hours, 
less than 1% would, get a, would see they'd lose some pay, but that's because they wouldn't be working nearly as much. 75% would get a pay rise, other 25% would be roughly as is. Is that not something worth talking about? This is, a lot of this is spin, Andrew. The 11, How do you know unless the, you sit the, down? So the 11% pay offer applies to a proportion of the junior doctor's uh, contract and the other proportion of their wage um, will actually be going down. And so you cannot say that this is an 11% pay rise. Well, you, do you don't have to be... Don't, Andrew, let me finish this point. It's an important point. How do you know if you don't sit round the table and negotiate? Uh, well, listen to what Jeremy Hunt is saying because he's saying that the uh, overall pay envelope for junior doctors is going to remain broadly the same. So how can it possibly be an 11% pay rise? Because it's a rise in the basic and they'll do less overtime and less hours would count as, as overtime. Look, it's, it's very complicated and it may well be that the junior doctors in the end will think, nope, this really doesn't take us forward. But should they not? Don't they owe it to those of us who pay their salaries, the people who use the NHS, to sit down with Mr Hunt and at least go through it? I think they have tried, but I think the way in which the House Secretary has handled these negotiations has been absolutely appalling. So Take the example of this. On Wednesday, again, 24 hours before the ballot opens, it's the first time that the House Secretary says that the Care Quality Commission are going to be involved in monitoring the hours of junior doctors. Why didn't we hear that two months right. ago? Why didn't we hear that six months ago? And so okay. I actually, so, and this is the Care Quality sure, Commission. Well, let me ask that you is, this. If you were a junior doctor, would you vote for strike action? Uh, well, I, I'm, you know, I'm not a junior doctor, and no, it's not I, for me as a politician. It. It's, it's not for me as a politician to sit in a well, television studio on a Sunday afternoon and tell junior doctors how they should vote I, in a ballot. No, I, I didn't I'm ask not you gonna, to, I'm not to going tell them. To I said, uh, would you? Well, let me put the question a different way. If they do vote for strike action, will the Labour Party support them in strike action? Uh, well, I'm not going to prejudge the outcome of the ballot. What, um, oh, no, what but, I, I, but if they do... I mean, you've come on here, you've argued the junior doctor's case, you've done so with knowledge and a, some eloquence as well. So if they vote for strike action, why, given everything you've just said, would you not support them? Jeremy Hunt can avoid a strike tomorrow if he withdraws the threat of contract but I'm not imposition. Asking about when I speak it, to Jeremy Hunt, I'll ask him his view. Yeah, it'd be would, interesting would, to get him if, on. Well, it certainly <laughs> would be interesting to get any government minister on these days. Uh, would you, if they support, if they vote for strike action, will the Labour Party support them? It's a simple question. Andrew, I'll be happy to come back and speak to you in a couple of weeks' time, but I am not going to prejudge the outcome of a democratic process that is currently underway. Is it the government in a mess or are the junior doctors chancing their arm? Well, it's interesting, isn't it? Because it's where those two conservative manifesto commitments meet. One is the seven-day uh, NHS, as you were talking about, but the other thing is there needs to be 22 billion of efficiency savings in the NHS to meet that 30 billion funding gap. There's an extra 8 billion of government spending. But what is interesting about this if, is if there is pain here, just imagine what it's going to be like in other areas of the public services. The NHS is protected. It has a ring-fence budget that rises in line with inflation. Other areas of government spending which are unprotected are going to face cuts of 25%. So this is just an early taste of how difficult things are going to get next year when we're on the, on the other side of the spending review. While we've got here, I want to put something to you that the Chief of the Defence Staff said today, not about the NHS, um, uh, that he'd be worried if Mr Corbyn views and Trident um, became Labour policy and that the, his admission he would never press the nuclear button uh, if that was translated into power. Let's just hear uh, what Sir Richard Houghton had to say. The whole thing about deterrence rests on the credibility of its use. When people say you're never going to use the deterrent, what I say is you use the deterrent you know, every second of every minute of every day. And the purpose of the deterrent is that you don't have to use it because you successfully deter. So no point at all in spending billions and billions of pounds if our enemies think that we'd never use it. Yeah, because deterrence is then completely undermined. Isn't that the point, that if you have the deterrent, uh, you say you're going to use it, even if you might not. If you don't have it, you save the money. But what's the logic of having it and saying you're not going to use it? Uh, so I think Jeremy was probably answering a hypothetical question. He has been clear that the Labour Party is going to have a review of its policy. I'm somebody who welcomes that review, to be I, honest. I understand that, um, but, what, but what, my point is simple. You can have a review and say, we won't have the deterrent, or we will have the deterrent. What is the logic, though, of ending up saying we will have the deterrent, but we won't use it? Um, 
I can, as I say, I think Jeremy was answering a hypothetical What's question. What's the logic of it? Um, well, I think, um, I think it's a difficult, a very, very difficult question. His views mm -hmm. on nuclear weapons sure. are long held. The Labour Party needs to go through this review. Yeah. We need to decide democratically as a party whether we want to commit to the renewal of Trident at the point at which that decision is taken. Okay. Labour Party members will we obviously be deciding there, to afraid. take... Thank you. We can come back and tell me that hypothetical okay. too. <laughs> we'll have a hypothetics. That's it for t this week. There's no Sunday politics next week because MPs are taking a break from Westminster, the poor dears. But we'll be back on November the 22nd. Remember, if it's Sunday, it's the Sunday politics. Unless, of course, it's a parliamentary recess. <laughs>